Hey everybody, happy to spend time with you and thanks for watching the video. What's a great organization, a perfect organization, a model organization? There's thousands of books about how to create that kind of organization. So I think a good organization has five characteristics. They certainly dream the impossible. They have the best idea. But then they also achieve the possible. It's okay to dream it, but you have to achieve what's possible. Third is that they have to make something that somebody wants. No matter what you do as an organization, you have to have a customer for what you do. Fourth is you have to hire superstars, whoever the best superstars are of the time, of the age. And lastly, they have to pursue noble ambitions. It's the noble pursuit of something good. That's what we're going to be talking about today, is this noble pursuit. What is it? How do you achieve it? What are some of the steps that you should follow to be that type of organization that pursues those types of aims? So the, our agenda today is to talk about what some of the key points I want everybody to remember along with points uh, about profits and why profits are good and this thought about taking some and giving some, which I'll spend a couple of minutes on. And then also um, what I really mean about pursuing noble ambitions, being a person uh, of noble character in an organization with noble aims. So some key points that I think are important to talk about in relation to becoming a good organization through noble pursuit. First is that profits equal ability. Throughout the course of the upcoming minutes, we're going to be talking about profits. And for some, if not many, they think profits is a, a bad thing. It's not. Profits are good. What you do with them is better. I'll highlight that in a little bit. But profits are good. It's no different than people having a job and at the end of the year, they want to make more money than they spend. Even at the month, when you get a monthly check, if you get paid monthly, you want to have more money than you spent. In organizations, we call that a profit. And profits allow you to do a number of things, not just to pay the people who work at the organization, but also to invest in the future. So profits are a good thing. If you have profits, you have an ability, an ability to do something good with those profits. So ability has to translate into, as the second point says, desire which means now that I have profits, I can actually do something with them. If I don't have profits, I can't do anything with, with um, our intentions. It's just an intention. But if you actually have monies, which we call profits, at the end of the month or year from an organization, you have the ability to do something good with those profits, and you also have to have the desire, which means I, I believe I should do something good with some of the money that we have um, uh, achieved, some of the money we have left over from all of our efforts throughout the year. And the last two points relate to the interrelationship between business and community and community and business. Each relies on the other for a high aspect of their success. Communities must have businesses to support their ambitions, whether it's from taxes for roads or education or public safety. But also, business relies on a community to provide the employees and to provide the safe community aspects that they can thrive in. There's an interrelationship between business and community, and frankly, I think some of that has been frayed. I think some of the community don't look at businesses as a positive force. And in fact, some of the business don't look at certain communities as a positive force as well. I think the more that we can rectify that, the better chance we have of businesses and communities creating this type of relationship that may result in more profits for the business. Then we can work on what businesses do with those profits. So that leads us to contributors to profits. Who are those that contribute to profits? What, how does a profit occur within an organization? Who are those individuals or collective groups that assist businesses in making profits? Certainly the first is the owner. The owner is the one with the right idea. They've also sacrificed and risked and they worked hard. They're the ones that may have taken a loan against their house or borrowed from friends and as a result of that they've worked hard and They've really uh, had a tremendous amount of stress to create this business that hopefully over time is going to be successful. But owners certainly are contributors, as are employees. Employees are those that are hired by owners to come in and say, I need some help in running this business and operating this business, creating these products and services. So employees say, I will give you my time and efforts, and in return, I expect to get a reward. Governments, of course, are great contributors to profits. If you don't have a community, which is often run by some type of government, that is hospitable to business, then you're not going to be able to be successful over the long term. 
a, a key aspect is the judicial aspect of courts, and, and courts are heavily involved in business. So government is part of that aspect that free trade is, is an example of where governments can assist businesses, fair practices, um, and obviously safety and security. Communities as well, again, are contributors to profit because good schools and safe neighborhoods and political societal support are, are, are absolutely vital for businesses. There's some entities throughout the United States and beyond that don't want certain businesses in their areas because they think that it's not constructive to their future, but actually destructive. And Amazon is a fairly large business, one of the largest in the United States. There's some states that welcome Amazon into their state to operate and some that frankly don't. But profits are good. And this is a misconception I think that we, we need to address. Again, the next Slide, we'll talk about profits are good, but what you do with them is better. But profits give you the ability. They support opportunities. They create monies for businesses to expand. If businesses expand, then they can invest more monies into a community. The taxes that they pay, if they are successful, do support roads and education, public safety, clean water, clean environment. All of that comes largely from business taxes. In fact, business taxes can be anywhere from 30 to 50 percent of what a local government operates upon. Continuation. No private and most public agencies or organizations only exist because they have more revenues than expenses. There's very few organizations, most of them are government, that can exist, that can exist by spending more than they make. So if you want an organization to continue, they must have a profit. At the very basis, of an organization's reason for being is that they make one dollar more than they spend. And lastly is potential. Profits give the potential to do something good with them. Again, it goes back to ability and desire. If you have the profits, it gives you the ability to use those profits to do something good. And that leads us to the slide of take some and give some. It's a concept I've used for a number of years because I think it's quite valuable. You should take some profits, but you should also give some. And I use this phrase uh, that I've repeated throughout this video, which is the profits are good, but what you do with them is better. And in relation to the profits, owners should receive some of the profits. How much, that's open for debate, but definitely owners should receive in some small way or large way a share of the profits that they helped create through their idea, risk, their sacrifice, and their hard work. Maybe they have higher salaries or homes and cars and travels, but they certainly deserve to share in the profits. Employees, too, deserve to share in some small way with the profits that their work and loyalty and dedication help create. They deserve to have fair salaries and some benefits and promotions and even some profit sharing, some sense of safety and security in their future. And yes, communities, too, societies, too, deserve in some way to share in the profits of a business that's operated within that community. It's beyond just taxes, but also to use that money to advance the interests of everybody who lives in that community, not just those who work there. And there's quite a few examples that we often don't hear about, about organizations who do give some back. For instance, there's WeWood, which is a watch manufacturer. For every um, a watch that's sold, they plant a tree. They've already planted over one million trees. What an amazing, what an amazing occurrence. Free shoes. Tom's Shoes gives away one pair of shoes for everyone sold. Again, a tremendous um, giving back aspect. Very noble adventure. Ivory Ella gives 10% of their profits to help save the elephants. This is an amazing circumstance. 10% of their profits. When I often talk about Ivory Ella, some people will say, well, only 10%, why can't they give more? Remember that that's just 10% of the profits. Some of the profits go to the owner, some may go to the employees, some may go to the community, but they also have to invest some of those monies as well, invest in future product development, placement, um, and services. And so 10% may be quite a bit when you look at where else that monies may go. Amazon donates about 0.5% to charity, and you get to pick the charity of your choice. And 0.5%, that may not sound like a lot, but when you look at uh, the billions of dollars in sales that Amazon has on a yearly basis, that's a significant charity, charitable enterprise. Twice as warm for every 
uh, piece of clothing that they sell, they donate the exact same clothing, the exact same piece of clothing to a shelter, twice as warm. So they're really, they're, their market is winter clothes, but for every one purchase, they actually give the exact same product um, to some type of shelter. Toothbrushes. Smile Squared gives a toothbrush to a child for every one purchase. Very similar to Warby Parker. Most people have heard that for every pair of glasses that are sold, they give another pair um, to someone who may need them. And I'll stop here for a second by talking about Warby Parker or some of the others, Tom's Shoes. If you know that maybe even by paying a little bit extra, you're going to be able to buy a pair of shoes for somebody else. You're going to buy one for yourself, but also buy one for somebody else. Because let's face it, the price of the shoes is factor into how much you're paying then you may want to say, I'd rather buy a pair of Tom's shoes than Joe's shoes, because I know at least some of my money is going to do some good. It's not just going to be a profit that somebody is going to utilize. That's where social responsibility really comes into play. Bombas, as you know, gives a free pair of socks for every pair of socks sold. They have now donated 11 million pairs of socks. And then there's a company called United by Blue. Very interesting. For every pound uh, for every um, item they sell, they remove one pound of trash from the oceans or waterways. One pound. And as of today, they have removed 1.8 million pounds of trash from, from the waterways. It's an amazing statistic. So those who want to clean the environment, they can go to this company to buy their, their, their products and know that at least some of their money is going to clean the ocean. It's a fantastic enterprise. And it brings us to the last slide. We've learned that profits are good, but what you do with them are better. You need profits. We, as a society, should encourage organizations to have profits. But we should also encourage them, and at least some portions of them, to do good with that. Because good people do good things. So in our organizations, when we talk about this perfect organization, this good organization, this model organization for the ages, at least part of that organization should be devoted to noble pursuits, which means we need people who believe that good people doing good things. We must all give more than we can take and we must all pursue noble ambitions. It's a great saying that says, those who contribute to the fair generation and noble distribution of profits create a more graceful, generous, and generous, and great, gracious, grateful, generous, and gracious world. So if you work and create profits through the fair generation, then you have a chance to at least direct some of those profits to an area of our world that can create, help create, a more grateful, gracious, and generous world. With that, I hope everybody becomes someone good and does something great. And think how great our world would be if all of us did that. Everybody enjoy the day. Thanks so much.